the last macromolecule group we will learn about is the nucleic acids. They are large, long-chained organic molecules made up of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and phosphorus atoms. Two of the most important nucleic acids in cells are deoxyribonucleic acid, commonly known as DNA, which is a double-stranded molecule, and its sister molecule, ribonucleic acid, or RNA, which is single-stranded. DNA is the information molecule located in the cell nucleus, and during cell division, organizes itself into rod-shaped units called chromosomes. The chromosomes organize the cell's inherited information in the form of segments of DNA called genes. Genes contain the instructions for human characteristics and help regulate cellular activities through protein synthesis. RNA plays a role during protein synthesis as messenger RNA, abbreviated mRNA, by carrying information in DNA's genes out of the nucleus to the ribosomes in the cytoplasm that assemble amino acids into proteins. The building blocks, or monomers, of nucleic acids are called nucleotides. Each nucleotide is made up of three parts, a nitrogenous, or nitrogen-containing base, a pentose, or five-carbon sugar, and a phosphate group. There are four different bases in DNA, adenine, symbolized by the capital letter A, thymine, T, cytosine, C, and guanine, G. Each nucleotide contains one of these four bases. Thymine and cytosine are smaller bases consisting of a single ring, called the pyrimidines, while adenine and guanine are larger bases having a double ring, called purines. The pentose sugar in DNA nucleotides is called deoxyribose and is attached to the base. Deoxyribose also attaches on its opposite side to the phosphate group. The sugar of one nucleotide, colored blue in the illustration, forms a covalent bond with the phosphate group, colored red, of another nucleotide one after another to create the long nucleic acid chain. The bases pair up together in DNA in a certain way. Adenine, colored purple, forms hydrogen bonds with thymine in yellow. And cytosine, sky blue, forms hydrogen bonds with guanine in green. These pairing relationships are called the base pair rules. DNA takes on the shape of a spiral, called a double helix, with the paired bases held together and stabilized by the hydrogen bonds. It looks like a rope ladder that is twisted around into a spiral shape. In the double helix, the paired bases project inward toward the center of the molecule, forming the steps, or rungs, of the ladder while the sugar phosphate backbone projects outward, forming the sides of the ladder. The unique base sequence of each DNA molecule makes up the genetic code, a chemical blueprint that contains the instructions for cellular traits. The outer sugar phosphate backbone helps stabilize DNA and protect the inner base sequence. The two DNA strands are complementary matches to each other. Because of the base pair rules, A bonds to T and C bonds to G, if you know the base sequence of one strand, you'll know the correct base sequence of the second strand. The only exception to the base pair rules are when mutations occur, which are changes in the base sequence. 
the effects of mutations vary. They may have no effect at all, or can result in cancer, genetic disorders, or be lethal to the cell. The two complementary strands of DNA are also used to copy new DNA molecules during cell division in a process called replication, where the double-stranded molecule splits in half between the base pairs, and each of these strands, called the old strands, act as templates or patterns to form the new second strands. RNA differs from DNA in several ways. RNA is single-stranded rather than double-stranded, like DNA. It contains a different pentose sugar called ribose. And RNA has a different pyrimidine base called uracil, symbolized by the letter U, which replaces the thymine found in DNA. Notice in the diagram there are no thymines in RNA, only uracils. There are three main types of RNA found in cells. Messenger RNA, abbreviated mRNA, transfer RNA, or tRNA, and ribosomal RNA, or rRNA. Each of these RNA molecules play specific roles during protein synthesis, which we will explore in the next unit.